You guys can tell us when you can start yeah. here. You guys all looking pretty at home. I know, I, I need, I need to be Get ready. Sorry. Oh, well, Really lucky you were here these days. So oh, thank yeah. you, thank you. For no, no, thank you guys. It's colder this year outside. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. where were you training? Madison? No, we we had Nike. Nike, Nike. Had like a court. You know. okay. It's inside a building. You almost got, you like know, you, you know the you Nike store, the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh, on the fifth yeah. floor. Yeah. What's the order of the start? Okay. So, hello. Uh, my name is Alexis Rockenbach. I'm the CEO at Compass. I'm really proud to be here at NRF, uh, the retail big show 2024, uh, to discuss innovation technologies uh, on retail and, and uh, connecting to our lives and, and uh, sports is a very important piece of our lives and so we are very glad to have here with us uh, Tiago Splitter, uh, a close friend that has been honoring with us, honoring us with his presence uh, last year, again this year, so thank you very much Tiago on being here with us. Thank you very much, it's my pleasure to be here, it's always fun to uh, talk with you guys and um, well explore all the things I know and also the things you guys um, show me every time I come here. Wonderful, wonderful. So we, we, we have some audience here. Uh, if anyone here wants to follow the sound of the of this conversation, there's a QR code that's being presented. You can follow that on your smartphone. Uh, and I'm, I'm really glad to, to, to have also here with us uh, Carrie Joe from Avenue Code. Avenue Code is uh, a company founded in North America, based uh, in San Francisco, uh, developing digital platforms for some of the very, uh, from a, some of the largest North American retail companies, finance industry, and and very proud, Kerry, to have you here with us on this beautiful conversation with Tiago. Too, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. I know that Tiago and I share a love of data. And so it's going to be fun to have a few conversations just about that and uh, how it's used in sports and retail, all sorts of fun stuff. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Avenue Code is, is part of the Compass UOL group. And also part of Compass UOL group uh, is Edgy. Uh, and we have here our friend Gary, uh, who is the chief revenue officer at uh, Edgy. So Gary, also thank you for being here with us. Yeah, it's, it's really a pleasure. I really enjoyed the conversation last year. I think you've always got a very innovative approach to things. I think using data technology to kind of create uh, better outcomes. So really excited to discuss and learn a little bit more about that today. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. And we, we also have here uh, with us in our booth at NRF this year, all the companies that are part of Compass UL Group. So we have here uh, the EveryMind team, who is our uh, specialized Salesforce uh, implementation company who has been thriving in, in Latin America and now also in the US. We also have uh, Invilia, our company that has a really deep work into digital natives and uh, into fintech industry. Uh, we also have the team of WebJump now joined by Content Red, who are leaders in the Adobe ecosystem space, uh, the team of Compass Texas. We have a lot of 
uh, people here that are really excited to be talking about performance, right? So in, in our lives, in our business, we are always thinking about how we can improve. Uh, so our group has been looking into technology, innovation technology, and especially these last few years, I think the buzzword of the moment is AI and especially Gen AI. So the, the, the real big thing that we are uh, uh, being challenged by our customers and is our purpose as a company is to help companies improve their performance using technology. And this is the reason why we have Tiago here today with us, because I think Tiago is an amazing example of um, um, a basketball player now going to the coach world. And I know we spoke a lot already in the past uh, how technology data are being able to transform the performance and improve the performance of the players of the game. Here we are talking about retail companies, but we are all always thinking about improving uh, the things we do. So I would like to kick off this conversation just on a very high level, Tiago, how do you see the role of technology in your sport uh, in terms of helping to improve performance of the players and of the teams? Well, uh, it's pretty easy. I would try to be as simple as possible to make you guys understand. I think the key wor word that you say is performance. So you want to perform, you want your team to win basketball games. You want your player to be better, to defend better in the court, to attack better in the court, right? So us as coaches, as organization, uh, and every NBA team uh, right now has this, you know, uh, technology is getting all the data that we have uh, and then applying that on a basketball court. Okay, so how we do this? Well, um, there's a lot of people saying, well, basketball have changed lately. Well, yes, because we have data, we have numbers. What is saying like, the quicker you play, the more trees you shoot, the more rebounds you get, will, you know, uh, I'm talking in simple terms right now, but that really changed the way we play basketball. You know, like before you have a lot of like tall, heavy guys, slow, and the numbers, the data was saying that, no, you need to be fast. The more possessions you have, the more you run, the more chances you have to score the basketball. So that's how, you know, basketball change. Those little details of, you know, uh, points per possessions. You know, like every shot in the court counts. Every spot where you shoot a basketball counts. Who is shooting? You know, uh, is that a player that shoot well from three-point line should be shooting? No. Sh maybe sh he should not be in the court. So, you know, all that data is telling us, no, you should not play that guy. You should play a guy that can shoot the three-point shots. So that's how it transforms basketball nowadays. Yeah, and it, it's – I'm sure you have things that come from your – instinct from your gut but if you have things coming from data that are helping you to to realize the facts that are there and the, I, if i understand what you are saying data is being the foundation for some of the very uh more relevant decisions on how to improve the way you play right data right. is behind those decisions you are making as a coach as a player Right, you're totally right. You like you say, you know, numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. They, yeah. They're gonna tell you the truth. Um, and yes, one game could be, you know, uh, some strange thing could happen. But after a long season of 82 games, uh, the numbers always gonna be right. Right. So that's why we study them so much because yes, you can win one game, but the end, the end of the day, the numbers gonna be right, and that's why the game and every sport has changed so much lately yeah well carrie i i i know you have a lot of questions there so i'm i'm very happy to pass it to you thank you so much i mean one of the things that i know that you do is you work directly with players and getting them at their peak performance and there's just so much out there now with the data with wearable devices with um, how do you use technology or how do the players use technology in a way that 
helps them train and get ready for games? Like, a, is there is there kind of some things that you could share with us about that? Yes. Um, let me talk about the physical part of the game. You know, you're talking about wearables. Yes, we have basically GPS pieces now on players. Um, getting all the numbers, how many times they jump during the game, how many times they sprint, how many um, miles they run during the game. So that will help us on the next day also, like should that guy work as hard in practice, should him rest a little bit, or no, he didn't have enough miles, he should run extra in the next day. So all those little you know, numbers will help you to have a, a better season, a, a better game on the next week. So. Uh, that's how we use those wearables uh, nowadays. And, and are, are players ever surprised with when they see their numbers? Like, do, do they think that the game is a little bit different than maybe they, they thought it was or ever? Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, uh, there's the eye where we see, right? And there's the numbers. But um, I would say this. Um, when you... <laughs> Our humans, we, we never want to, you know, see the numbers. We, we never want to see the reality. But the, sometimes in, the numbers are cruel. You know, they tell you the truth. And then we have the, this saying, you know, tell the truth. And the numbers always tell the truth. So when you didn't run off, you got to go next day and run in the treadmill or do some extra work. And they, no, nah, I'm good. No, you have to. Because if not, you keep going low, keep going low, and you're going to stay um away from your competition because that's what every NBA team is doing, every Premier League uh, soccer team are doing. So if you're not at your top of your level, uh, it's just like a, a retail business. You got to be at the top of your level. You, you know, you got to know your numbers. You got to, you know, know what's the best to sell the most or do whatever you need to do. And that's the competition. That's the performance. That's the word. That's the performance that you want to achieve. So, Tiago, I know we've talked a lot about gathering data. Um, I want to expand a little and kind of get your thoughts on kind of using that data. Obviously, the big buzzword over the last 12, 16 months has been artificial intelligence. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts and kind of how it's currently being used um, or ideas that you have of better ways to use it uh, around the data that you guys are collecting. So we have a lot of data. Um, you know, there's different platforms in basketball that we get all that data and then every team in the NBA has a way to show it, different platforms, right? Um, how we can be better? It's tricky because um, there's a part of, of basketball, there's a feeling, right? Yeah. And that's where we still not there yet. The sport, that's why sports is so magical. That's why it's not easy. If not, if you just hire the best numbers and you know you're going to win it. But there's a chemistry part of it. You know, we are humans and players and, and that's, you know, uh, right there as well. Now, how to get better? I would say... Now we start to use some VR stuff, like for example, players are injured, right? They cannot be in the court and run the sets that we do. We have like, maybe that guy can use a VR and run through the sets that we do. You know, now the injured player is not running in the court, but he is reacting to what's going on on the VR set. And then, you know, he's learning the game that way. There's different ways to do that. Uh, of course, you can just watch a film, but I think the VR is something that some teams are doing now um, and exploring that as well. And also, you know, data to hire a player, to do trades between teams, because, you know, at the NBA, you can trade a player. So you use all these metrics and how they can each player can help your team to be better. Um, and I feel like every NBA team try to do their best on that aspect. So I have an idea for the Rockets. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so think of a scenario where we were talking here, Gary was asking how we can improve AI. And our our goal is a co as a company is to help our retail customers, our financial service co co customers to use technology in an innovative way. So I was thinking about Gary's question and um, 
you were talking to us earlier here that part of your role as an assistant coach is to follow your competitors. Yes. Study the the, the behaviors of the team, st study their plays, and try to predict how they will play against you so that you can educate the players and your team on what they should expect. And, and then I was thinking now also, you were also talking about this part of the feeling, perhaps on this day, this player is playing differently because something went on in his personal life or whatever. So what about if instead of just looking into the previous games that you are studying the plays of your competitors, how about Gen AI is watching your live game today and every few minutes it's giving you as the assistant coach some hints on the current, that day game behavior of the players trying to figure out something that's new that was not like the behavior on the past games but on today's game is that something that you already have in place is the is 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 the technology that is supporting your work already moving in that direction in some way i don't like that i'm gonna lose my jobs <laughs> <laughs> no uh i'm just kidding but yes there is uh there is a, we we can uh, track all of those movements whatever is not Let, let's give an example so i'm telling my uh player that uh player a and b they like to go left they like to drive left okay and that game they're going right all the time right right so they doing a different pattern which could happen but in the end of the day i want to keep sending him to the hand I want because the numbers will come back. The numbers will come back. It, it could be in the last possession of the game. He goes with his, the hand that he doesn't like and he misses. Right. So you got to be convicted of what you're telling your players to do. And, and, and the, at the end of the day, the, the numbers will come back. Okay. Um, there is also a feeling right like okay maybe you know he's going left because whatever the defense is presenting a different um view in front of him so that's the the job of the coach you gotta see that he gotta tell hey that's what's going on and and but the numbers they don't lie, they don't lie. It, it might yeah. be one game that yeah. you lose and you don't yeah. you don't care because yeah. if you be consistent right. 82 games you're gonna win more if you follow the numbers yeah. and you don't care when you lose a game like that right. because a guy that was not a shooter in one game he's making all the shots that's okay he can beat you one game but in 82 games you're gonna win and then in the playoff series of seven games you're not gonna make every seven game shots Right. So that's how you got to, you know, follow the numbers. Okay. Let me be very, very clear. We don't want to replace your job. Okay? <laughs> that's right. Okay. 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 Carrie. Well, it's, it's interesting what you're talking about because you're really talking about how it's about trends and you're looking at data over time. It's a full season, right? And so in one game, although you get data, it may not be representative of someone's trends because yes. they're reacting. And, and I think that's a lot in sales as well and in business, right? We, we look at sort of, okay, well, what's the overall trend? I mean, and, and one of the trends that we're seeing is a little bit of a shift in player engagement and player experiences. There's a lot more with the technology that they can do, whether it's the video games and the experiences where, you know, they're, they're almost playing with their favorite players. Um, how, how do you see fans and fans engaging with the players and the teams now and in the future? Do you see it changing? Do you, do you have a gut feel about what people are, are liking? Yes. Yes. I just, just going back to what we said before, there's, uh, you know, when a player make a shot in one game, we call it, that's a small sample. That's yeah. not, that's not good enough. We need like a, a, a big sample to make it prove that he's a good player. So going back to the fans, um, I th I think 
the media today is doing a good job of educating the, the fans and why the game has changed. You know, there's a reason why uh, the team is playing away or the player is just shooting a three or trying to get to a layup because the mid-range is not the best shot in the league. Uh, so there's a trend of, okay, we are in this technology world right now where um, the, the coaches know, the players know, and the fans now understand why uh, a team play a certain way. And there is, of course, you know, social media. There is the, the NBA 2K, which is a basketball uh, game where people... The kids, are, you know, sometimes they, you know, it's funny, like kids will come to me when I used to play and say, you know, what? I used to play with you all the time on, on my video game. I'm like, when before kids will say, well, I used to watch you, you know, but now, no, I play with you and I like to play with you because you score a lot. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I take that as a compliment. But, you know, it's crazy how I have a real person player but i also have a virtual player that people is playing with me you know it's just it's just like blows my mind sometimes oh you know it's not me playing it's uh you know it's a computer <laughs> so yeah it's funny and, and you're now if i got this right i believe that you're the first brazilian player in the nba to win a championship correct yes. <laughs> thank you a huge congratulations can you tell us a bit what that means to you, to your family, to the country a little bit? Maybe just talk to us about that because that's incredibly special. Well, um, to be honest, you know, growing up in Brazil, and a lot of people here can say it's not a basketball country, right? It's like a soccer. Everybody knows that. So I came from a family which my dad used to play basketball and my mom will support me every day of the week to go and, wor and work out and practice and they saw my dream coming up and and at age of 13 14 the nba for me was like okay maybe i have a chance maybe i can play in the nba one day right it took me some years to get there i got to the nba at 25 and then i go to one of the best teams in the nba which is san antonio spurs back then and okay now maybe i have a chance to win a championship wow you know, so you go step by step. It's not like a one thing. Oh, you NBA champion. No, you know that all people see is the top of the iceberg, and you know, the the whole thing is <laughs> it's different. But it was a long way, and it's worth it. And you know, a, a lot of hours in the gym, and a lot of effort, a lot of um, times that I miss with my family, with my friends, and but it's worth it. Well, and and I know um, for myself. So uh, I'm from Canada. And so hockey is our national sport. And so, of course, I'm a hockey mom. And I, I know, I know um, how much it is to, to effort that the family puts into it. I understand you have two young kids, a, a little girl and a little boy. Yes. <laughs> what, what are you doing in terms of raising your children that maybe was akin to what your parents gave you? Like, how are you looking at raising your child as an NBA star yourself? I mean, that's pretty big, right? Right, right. So... Uh so one of the things my parents did, they let me do whatever I want to do. They never forced me, you have to be a basketball player. Of course, my dad likes basketball, but he, he always support me. And, okay, you want to be a basketball player? I'm going to give you all the tools you need. I'm going to bring you, drive you every day to the gym, and then you do what you got to do. If you like it, you like it. And I think that's what I try to do with my kids, let them do whatever they want to do. Find their own passion. Yes, because never, nothing force is going to be sound right. So, if they want to play soccer, if they want to do, you know, they want to be an artist, why not? You know, uh, I think that's the important message. Well, I think your children are very, very lucky and have a great opportunity, you know, in in the states. And I know you're living in Houston now, so so best of luck there. I did want to go back to one thing you mentioned, kind of a moment ago, when Alexis was talking about the data, and you're like artificial intelligence, I, w I don't want it to replace me. I think it's a very common sentiment though. Yes. A lot of people are concerned about it. And I think that one of the things that we're trying to do as an organization is to really present it in a way that people are embracing it. We're giving them superpowers in a sense. So I just kind of, with that thought in mind, is there any kind of challenge that you kind of encounter on a regular basis 
you know, working with the team, working with the players, working with the data, that you're like, I wonder if somebody could make this a little bit easier uh, to give, to summarize things, to forecast them, to give me suggestions, again, not to replace you, but like if I'm writing an email draft, maybe it gives me some suggestions and I can then crank out 10 or 20 of them a little bit faster. So I'm just kind of curious with all the data you're gathering, any thoughts around that? Yeah, don't get me wrong. I use data every day oh, okay, course, to coach. Course. First of all, I need um, something to support. It's not just like, I think that's this, the... So, no, the numbers are saying this. He's shooting 48% from three. You better uh -huh. guard him. Yeah. So I have a number. I have like, this is like on stone. You know, that's, uh -huh. that's real. You know, that's the number. Now, the challenge we have, I would say, in the NBA is players and teams change so much every season that that sample sometimes is not big enough. Okay? And players, they got better too. Yeah. You know, they are, like we say, they can be better and worse. But Or an injury can change the way a player uh, plays. Or a player is in the summer working on his shot, and that guy that could not shoot next year, they're gonna be a, he's gonna be a great shooter. So that happens too. So you gotta be able to adapt and see what's going on, and if there's a reason to change the way you, you know, you present your numbers and your strategy to your to your players. I just wonder if there would be a benefit in like the players on the team getting their historical data for your team or others, and like. Kiri, I know we've talked about this in Alexis, like building your own large language model for the Rockets and its players that are on the team now, but also some of their historical results to then just have a sense of getting some predictions and analyzing to then as you're putting together the, uh, the game plan, looking at the current data and then just kind of pattern matching what you think might apply. We have that. Uh, we have we 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 use that a lot. For example, Great. um we go, we're going to play the Knicks tomorrow, and there's no secret that they are the best offensive rebound in the NBA, the whole NBA. So today, okay, I got the numbers, and then what I do is I gotta collect film and show instead of the numbers, just the numbers to maybe make them memorize better. Okay, I gotta show them five clips of the Knicks just crashing the board, getting the board, shooting, missing again, crashing the board, missing, getting the rebound again. So I'm showing what the numbers are saying, you know, and that what the data is saying. And then you can use as, okay, uh, Coach Team Thibodeau, Tom Thibodeau always have teams that play hard, crash the rebound. So there's a pattern of the coach as well. So. Though, that's how we use data in you know in a sh short way to say it. If I can just add, I think that that's a lot of what we see in the industry as well, right? It's not AI, generative AI, it's not going to replace people. It helps people be their best. At the end of the day, the skill that you bring to bring that contextualized, to bring the understanding, motivate the players, right? That's not something that a computer can do, but the data and that analytic analytics can help you do your job better so we all perform at a better level. And that's why we always say at Avenue Code, you know, generative AI isn't going to replace people, it just replaces tasks. And then people can kind of elevate themselves a little bit. It makes my job so much easier. <laughs> if I had to go and, you know, check all those numbers game by game and put numbers together, I would take hours. Now, all I have to do is go check our software page that we have. Okay. Um, let me see the Knicks, what they're going to do, you know? So that's way easier, makes my job way easier. Yeah, and, and I think <clears throat> there's also this situation where uh, you, have, you have all that data, but people still don't want to believe on what data is saying, right? I'm, I'm not sure that you, you, you have many of those situations, but we live that every day uh, on... And, and many times it's not like that the data is wrong, perhaps it's not being interpreted in the right way. And then people sometimes they don't really trust. It's not because the fact isn't there, but it's because the nuance of the thing you are looking into needs some human experience to interpret it the right way. Does that make any sense? Do you leave those situations like on, on players 
you are bringing them data and they are saying, no, this is wrong. 100%, 100%. Sometimes our eyes lie to us, right? Like, because like, let's get back to who is a shooter, who is not. So, okay, I'm telling my, my players that Alexis cannot shoot. And you go that game and you make two in a row. They're going to look at you like, bro, you told me that Alexis cannot shoot. And he just made two. And like, just keep, let him shoot more. <laughs> You're going to see by the end of the day, he's going to be two for 12. You're going to miss the rest of it. So, yes, we get that a lot. And, but I think it's changing. It's changing. Yes. Uh, it, you know, data in basketball analytics is changing and people are seen every day and we are educating our new players. And and I guess, you know, on, on business retail or, or whatever you do, I think uh, people will change as well and you understand what's going on. Well, well I think, you know, you, you talk about the data and the importance of data for making decisions. And certainly in the industry, one of the big conversations is around bias that because to get those analytics and those predictions, you got to look at large sets of data. And for instance, a lot of that data may be from men playing the game and not women. So if the analytics programs are used to seeing women play, there might be a, a bias. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot of focus on to make sure that the democratization of AI is there. In your world, making sure that all players are using the technology the same way? Is there a focus to make sure that there's a execution of, like that we're looking at the tech for the player, everybody gets the same amount of attention, or is it you just look at certain people who can use the technology, maybe they're more open to listening to the technology, or do you just have a one approach for the whole team? Do you personalize it at all, or...? Well, um, first of all, basketball is a team sport, so everybody needs to be, you know, connected together. Uh, but there is difference on the opponent, like where you put the tension. You're not going to put attention on the last guy in the bench, you know, because we all know that they're not going to memorize every player of the opponent's team. So you focus more on the top three, top four players. How are going to guard the top three players in the other team? That's, yes, you, you got to do that. Now, as when we look ourselves, we got to be connected. We got to be in the same page, the way we defend. Um, there is always, you know, let's say Alexis, he's going to defend me in the game. So he got to know more about me. I got Tiago, he likes his right hand hook, whatever. Uh, so, yes, he's going to know a little bit more about myself and, in general, the other team. So there's different specifications, but, yeah, try to keep it even. Just because the, the game is so, you know, sometimes you hear, sometimes you're guarding a different type of player, so dynamic. Ask, are we going to ask the audience if there's any yes. questions? Yes, while we think of the next next topic here, I just would like to invite if there's anyone in the audience there that has any question or would like to make any comment, please just let us let Alison know and he will coordinate so that we get you here to make the questions as well. And uh, well, Kerry, I think the, the, the big thing for us here being at NRF with all these amazing companies uh, from from all the world looking into how technology is disrupting business. I think the great opportunity that we have here today is really to, to, to be here exchanging these ideas on how the combination of human talent and technology can improve performance. And I think a part of what Gary was saying is that uh, much of what you see on the technology platforms right now is on focus on augmenting the potential of humans so that we can uh, do better so do you do you do you do you believe in the next few years uh, uh, people will keep embracing these opportunities in 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 your specific world uh, in in sports do, do you feel the players they keep open to these changes 
or are they like fighting against it? And and so how, how is the dynamics? Because this exact same thing happens in the retail. People people are looking into these wonderful new technologies. They sometimes they don't know how to use them, and they need to learn. Sometimes they already know. They learned, but but for some reason they are not implementing it the right way. So how do you see that dynamic interaction going on? Well, for sure, it's here to stay. That's that's not a, that's not going to change. Uh, we will need the technology, the data, uh, to put teams together to prepare for games. And I I will give you an example how sometimes it can change inside of the game plan. For example. If I don't know if you guys remember Shaquille O'Neal, one of the biggest dudes to ever play basketball and super agile, and so he changed the whole NBA. Why? Because you need big guys like him to guard him. Because if you didn't have two or three guys to at least foul him, he would score a hundred points in a game. Okay, so the the NBA changed because of him. Then you have a guy like Steph Curry that runs and shoots trees. So the whole league has to change. It's, oh, we need faster guys. We need guys that can guard him, run around him, and also shoot trees on offense. So it changed. And technology data, like the data is also like getting all those numbers. Oh, the teams are playing like this now. But when you have too many smalls, you don't rebound. So it's kind of like, uh, what's next? What's next? Now every NBA team wants, okay, we need rebounders. We need guys to get more possessions, more chances to score. So... You know, it's an evolution of the game. And also, there's generation talents like Shaq, like Curry. Those type of guys change and change the technology because they change all the numbers and change the type of players you have in the court. So we're going to have technology forever. It's just going to change the numbers a little bit. You know, it's not going to change. Well, it's interesting when you talk about the changes in technology because the biggest shift in the last couple of years has been, of course, analytics that show the data to generative AI that predict the data, right? And so it'll be interesting to see more of the predictions coming into your coaching. I don't know, maybe maybe you'll have an AI agent helping you coach the games one day. Hey, maybe. <laughs> well, we already have analytical guys behind the bench telling us, hey, listen, now it's time to slow down the game because you up 10, it's two minutes and a half left. You know, there's so many possessions. So we already have that. Wonderful. I also, we also have here Gustavo. Gustavo is the CEO of Everymind, our the company at Compasswell Group who specializes on Salesforce implementation. So Gustavo, I think you have some nice questions here as well. Hi, Thiago. Uh, nice to see you again at the NRF. So thank you. It's great to have you here. Uh, my question is more related to leagues than the clubs. Uh, I, I'm curious to, to hear from you your thoughts about how the leagues uh, could take advantage of all the data that clubs are able to gather, not only from the athletes, but even from fans and sponsors, uh, concessions, merchandise sales, to make the sport even uh, fantastic, more, 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 more great, fantastic, more fantastic, you know? Well, they are. They are. They are using. I know. I'm not inside of the league, but I can. What I can tell you is this: the NBA is a news machine. You, you we have news every day in the media, and they know all the metrics and they know the highlights. Dunks and trees are plays that people like to watch, on social media, on TV, on highlights. So they are using those to sell the league, not just in America, but around the world, right? The NBA right now is the biggest league in the world. We have NBA in every corner of the world, okay? And this is what the NBA is doing really well, and it's how to sell the league to, to the world. And different than NFL, which is not as big. They, they're huge in US, but not as big as the NBA. So, that's why NBA for me is, you know, is the future of leagues and, and how they they treat their product. The product is the big thing, and, and they do it very well. Awesome. We also have here um, Alexandre. Alexandre, a very popular guy. From all these people with all their questions. <laughs> Alexandre is a director at. Uh, 
WebJump. WebJump is uh, our company who specializes on implementing Adobe platforms. And I, I well, I, I know you like to play some basketball as well. So I think you might have some better questions than I do. So, so uh, Thiago, uh, looking for the data that we can capture from the athletes, uh, there are a way to prevent injuries during the season, like to guide the, 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 the guys to have more specified training in order to ensure that they, they have much more uh, time to play like yes <clears throat> yes so this is what we do right now so there is um for example there's one machine that some teams use that calculates your strength on your hamstring okay wow. so you, so they keep um taking those numbers during the season and if one of those weeks, your hamstring, which is a big thing in basketball, is not as strong, something is going on with you. Your body is about to get injured. Yeah. So that's, you know, and not just the hamstring. They use, you know, like all type of muscle in your body. They try to measure how strong are your muscle at that moment. Maybe that week you go, you're going to be vulnerable to injury. So you might take it easy. You might have to rest a couple of days. You might have to have a day off. Um, so, yeah, we try to prevent. But also, all those numbers are making our athletes more better athletes. Yeah. So they running more, they jumping more. So the game. That's why you see so many like great athletes nowadays, because that's all AI or data, you know, telling them, okay, you need to rest today, you need to work tomorrow. So they they're getting big, they're getting faster, they get stronger, and that also give you more injuries because you are playing at a high limit of your body, right? So it's kind of like a give and take, but yes, we are trying to always um, get our performance better and trying to treat our players this better way. And, and I would guess to nutrition, the the, yes. the nutrition it probably really helps tell athletes what they need to be getting and what they're getting. And yes, yes, I'll I'll be honest. Basketball players are the not best <laughs> in nutritional, but like for example, individual sports, they are way better of um, taking care of what they eat. I, I, I gotta be honest. Basketball players, yes, but um, they could use the technology. Let's for put it sure. That way. But like the it, the, the, the great enough. professionals, like LeBron James, he's unbelievable. Like everything that he puts in his body, and that's why he's, you know, thirty nine years old and playing the way he is. Yeah, yeah. I think this uh, persistence, uh, this discipline on 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 following. Uh, things that data is telling you is, is is really part of the success of amazing players like like LeBron you mentioned, like yourself, like many other great players. And I think for all the companies that are here, um, I think this is an important message on uh, technology and data and the insights. Uh, they are there to be followed, for you to understand, for you to build your culture on top of them and learn how to use them. And I, so I think this conversation here for me today, it's its its a very interesting connection uh, because in business, in sports, in life, um, things are in front of us and we need to understand them and uh, we need to be kind to that information as well and learn how to, to process and how to use it. So, uh, Tiago, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that, that you were here with us. Uh, I think, Kerry, uh, if, you, if you want to go to the final session of, of our interview I'm, I'm i'm just really uh honored to have you here and sharing your knowledge sharing with our retail customers um uh, all the things that we can get from technology and really proud to see how you have grown as a player now as a coach and wishing you all the success you deserve well thank you very much um just when i add something you know like we were talking about the Rockets, the NBA, whatever. But the NBA want to be at the top of the world. The, every team in the NBA want to be in the top of the NBA, right? So and every little advantage that you can take to be there, you got to take it. You know, it's going to transform you in a, in a better team. You, your revenue is going to be better. And it's facts. Uh, th that's what it is, right? You see the NBA, where is the NBA right now? You see all the NBA teams that are using data and how much better they got. And of course, there are a lot of things going on in a basketball team. But um, if you have your 
your company and you want to go above the rest of them, you definitely should use uh, your services and, and AI and Gen AI and everything to get you above the others. I think just uh, in, in final, the one thing that, as you said, it's performance is what we're all striving for. But at the end of the day, there's always, it's, it's a personal decision. You decide that you want to be excellent. You want to pursue excellence. Um, data gives us a lot of insights, but there's also a lot of examples where players defy the numbers with their heart, with their work ethic. Yeah. How, how have you as a person been able to find that drive and to, to excel? Is there anything that you can leave with our, our viewers about performing at that excellent level that you've been able to do? Well, you know, sports in the end of the day, um, we try to be better than the numbers. You know, we don't want to, oh, Tiago, you are a better free throw shooter. Oh, really? Okay, I'm going to get better. That will make me a better basketball player, you know. That will transform me into a new player. So if I can, every season, hey, I got to change their numbers because I'm getting better, right? So I got to, I have tried to beat the numbers. And, and that's the force that you got to have inside to be an athlete and to be in the NBA one day or to be your the best player in your own team, on in your state, on your country, or whatever you do, or you have a business. Of course, there is technology that can help you, but your passion, it's you. You, you got to bring it. That's yeah. Well, thank you Fantastic. So much. Thiago, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to, on behalf of the teams of Edgy, Invilia, Avenue Code, Everymind, WebJump, Content Red Compass, I would like to thank you so much for being with us. I would like to thank our customers that are watching this live, the customers that were here with us, uh, the opportunity for us to be sharing this. I think we are all looking into these small improvements that we can get every day and that can make us better. I think uh, in life, in business, in basketball, many times the game is decided on that those last five seconds and and it, i think being prepared using data using technology is something that that is perhaps the main lesson that i take from from our conversation with you today on how impactful data and technology can be on everything we do so thank you very much for being with us here again i hope in 2025 we are as lucky as we were this year that you are again playing while we are here and that we can invite you to be here and i will invite carrie to give you a small gift from Compass. It's our Thank teddy bear. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. We, we know uh, you have your, your My kids, kids will love it. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, OK. OK. I'll take that. Tiago, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much you. for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the audience. See you guys. Till the next one. Bye-bye. Awesome. OK, great.